All right. I like to start my own work at the last page often because it helps me to feel the most confident about where I'm heading towards as opposed to feeling confident at the beginning and then feeling less and less confident towards the end. So this is what I'm doing. I'm starting at the end of this piece and let's try to figure it out. First, or I should say last thing to <laughs> that we will be playing. First thing that I will uh, figure out is this chord, which is, you know, a little bit tricky because of the roll and the big stretch. But this is my general approach to these wide chords. Fifth finger plays at this angle. Thumb stretches out as far as it can. For some people it can only go this far, for some people it can go further, but either way, the only finger that's sort of parallel to the keys is the second, and it's way deep inside between the black keys. And so then what happens is you do this, right? You go with this, this, and this. And eventually you kind of grab those keys with those three fingers in fast succession, so it sounds like this but has to be super quiet, so that takes a while to really master this. Very light touch that basically slides the finger on the surface of the key. Right? Eventually you get it. It's not so nice if your piano is a very bright piano, then you really struggle, and I might even suggest putting the uno chord down, you know, left foot. So as long as you've got that very light, quick, strum through those three notes, you're good. The, la the last note is probably coincident with the top note of the left hand, something like that. Or you can try it maybe with the second note, something, you know, it, it can work different ways. Some people might do that little sustain pedal dab. Whatever it is for you, just work out the ending so that you feel happy about how you are finishing this piece. And then you build into it, right? So we're going to have, what is it? C sharp to A. A is going to be staccato. So you kind of practice this staccato like this. The pedal is down because it has to hold that long chord that starts in measure, what is it, 83. And you're just holding it. But in the meanwhile, oh, it's actually supposed to be an, an octave higher. Whoops. Um, something like this. Right, but on that last note, you really want to come off the pedal nice and clean. So this is finger one on A, right? And pedal is down. So not only are you get teaching yourself to get into that role and really master that pianissimo as best as you can, you're also teaching that foot to, to come up at the same time. So a couple of things to coordinate, but other than that, this line is relatively straightforward, I think. You know, you take this chord, right? Instantly, left hand slides in, right hand goes up here, you wait, you count. Sempre in tempo means you count out those four beats. One, two, whatever your tempo is, make sure it's steady. One, two, so three, four, one, two, three, four, one. Right, something like that. I didn't do it perfectly. My third finger was supposed to be on C natural, kind of stuck deep inside those black keys. Well, actually, it doesn't have to be too deep. As long as it's got enough of that depth to reach the C sharp easily, you're fine. So that's where this line is at. So let's, let's go into something a little more interesting. All right, penultimate line, lots going on. Uh, let's look at the very last measure of this line. I would probably, unless you have a relatively short span in your hand, would suggest using either two or maybe three is a more reasonable compromise. So in other words, get rid of this. Uh, where is this? Here it is. Got lost in my own device. Uh, so yeah, instead of that five, I just think it's a better idea because all you have to do is extend finger one, whereas if you go to five, you go, 
there's a lot of movement you're doing that's unnecessary. But again, if your hand is not particularly wide span, then maybe that's the better approach. Another approach is, right, let's say you do want to have a five down here, but you could also have a two instead of that one. So that way you are in position. And of course, instantly you have to go down here. And this, if you're using a one, three, I think one, two slide inside the keyboard is pretty reasonable. Right, something like that. If you're using uh, something like two, five, one, five, then maybe two, three is more reasonable. So always combine gestures <coughs> into not exactly single position gestures because you always have to move, adjust some fingers, but something that allows you to move maybe one or two fingers only instead of the whole uh, hand, yeah. All right, let's look at the right hand. Yeah, this is pretty self-explanatory in, in terms of fingers. I would just clarify that that first note in the measure is four, but that's just an overkill. Um, what's more important is first position is this, second position is this. Again, I would work on that. I wouldn't just play it and expect it to come naturally. I would say literally this is me on the edge of the white key, okay? This is me on the edge of the black key. It's a big distance to travel, I'm going to cover it. Now, sometimes it's possible to cheat this distance by forcing yourself to play white keys inside next to the black keys. And then maybe you don't have so much of a distance to travel. But, you know, playing so deep inside black keys with long fingers is not that comfortable, so it probably makes more sense to just teach yourself this diagonal move, but it's a move, so you have to learn it. Uh, working backwards, as I like to do. Okay, so just looking at the last two beats of this final measure. Right, we then have to do that. Pull this up one more time. Right, so there's that sense of, even if you know what you're doing, there is that final moment before the uh, measure ends where you really want to be thinking position change. And so, of course, I love to do this thing that I do. Let me just shift this out of the way. Where I mark my position changes very actively. So here I would be making sure to move finger one onto D. Not quite as neat as I want it to be, but roughly. Right, and then the left hand, of course, that last se last microsecond well last millisecond uh, or 20 or 100 or so shift to d and f sharp uh, anticipating that final lines chord uh, and so i would practice this i i always practice position shifts until i master them because this was probably my biggest um, lack of technical takeaway from when i was younger which is mastering these preparations as much as mastering the notes I play. Okay, so I'm holding... So imagine I'm in pause mode on the very final chord with that staccato E in the right hand before those red rectangle squares. I'm paused and now all I'm thinking is that, right? How can I make that transition smooth? One, one way you can do it is slide on that A, G in the left hand if you want, slide inside, maybe that makes it a little easier, or even if you don't, if you just do this, right, you still have to make the move. So however you do it, make it straightforward, something you can understand. It's a little uncomfortable, but this is one thing I like to do, knowing that I have to play D down there, with finger two, I would prepare it like this. So I wouldn't wait till the last minute to do it. I would actually teach myself, you know, by this point, by the beginning of this last measure, I would probably be sticking my second finger over to D as much as I can. And for some people it might be a little less comfortable, but 
in any case my point is if you can prepare something in advance do it then that move is maybe a little easier i'm only worried about the thumb not both fingers right so work things like that out right away so they don't keep tripping you up as you're practicing in the later weeks of uh, your practice practice uh, session on, on the piece yeah, i think kind of sliding in and playing this tenuto ag in the left hand is a little tricky so i'm not advocating for that but it is an option just putting it out there i would just stop like this just play it and then stop remember tenuto doesn't mean you have to hold it all the way into the following chord right that would be a legato marking that's not what we have here we have a very you know sustained give it good three quarters of its uh value quarter note but um if it's not marked as a tenuto in this piece the quarter note is often marked as as a staccato which is of course just as short as possible if it's not marked as a staccato or tenuto then you kind of just go on and off detached so in other words basically half of the value of the quarter note the way you would probably do it in the classical era style you know 18th early 19th century pieces and actually a lot of the 20th century pieces that you might describe as neoclassical but anyway that aside technically just work on this work on this you got second finger on e you got this here boom right just get that right and then it's just the backwards work that i like to do which is you hold e right you've just played the g staccato in the right hand you've just played that a and g in the left and you're just saying okay all i have to do is e staccato and do that position jump right that's all you're doing holding this and now you're saying go that's it that way it structures all the moves you have to go through in your mind you're not skipping over anything you're very much in control it makes sense and i know i'm taking quite a lot of time to explain just a very very small part of this piece but the nice thing is if you do study it carefully it's so applicable to everything else and very quickly you are starting to well quickly is you know one day two days three days i don't know what it takes to kind of master the fundamentals of any a technical challenge but once you have mastered it suddenly everything else just goes very quickly after that because it's more of the same different chords you know maybe different patterns but essentially it's that same idea holding playing a certain way and jumping all right so continuing forward as if we've practiced for a few days now we have something like maybe a little too much i don't need to do that much just keep my right hand inside the keys that's fine so that's sort of starting to fall into place you're jumping all the right things then uh, the previous two beats are of course these um, other harmony notes that have to land uh, in preparation for beat three so same thing i for my own pieces i definitely do this i mark the position change just like that and then i just do that maybe if i'm preparing that second finger on d i do that right so i'm teaching these kind of weird kind of uncomfortable body motions until they feel a little more uh accepted by my brain there you go right, quite a bit of work by this time i'm not worried that final note that i'm just jumping from the d i'm not worried about holding the two bottom notes in the right hand you're going to let go because they've been heard you don't need to keep holding them all the way until like you need time to jump right so you're going to let go of d and g i can even show you with this right let go so that all you're doing is this okay but at b uh, where you're still holding the bottom e same thing you're holding 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 and then that's it 
I'm stopping to force myself to notice I've done the jump. Eventually, you know, we keep doing it, keep coming back to it for a few practice sessions, perhaps, and suddenly you can do this pretty easily. So that has to be automated. All right, so luckily I don't really need to go through this entire line uh, of music show in this kind of work. You can copy paste this pattern of work to the other three measures in this line. So once you've done the work, it probably sounds something like this, although I haven't really done the work over a couple of days. So you'll probably notice some jittery position changes. Let's see. really awful as you could tell from watching me and me taking this slow tempo by the way this might be another uh, good moment to talk about something I talk about relatively infrequently and I probably should do a whole video series just about that but that's the idea of focusing on nothing but tempo and rhythm and that to me seems you know, if not as if not more important, but certainly as important as, as hitting the right notes. And the only way you can really practice it is if you let go of the right notes, right? So if you're practicing the right notes, often you slow down or, you know, you, you only do it uh, as short snippets, but you're really not worrying about that continuity of the tempo. And then, of course, to balance the act, you really should be working on pa, 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 da, pa, 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 da, whatever your tempo is, keeping that steady, keeping it flowing forward. But then that means don't worry about the right note. So let's try that. Right, I got, totally got off my notes, totally lost position, started to kind of panic in my head perhaps. But what I was forcing myself not to do is stop or slow down. It was just boom, 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 right? Something like that. And that's just a way to remind you what you're really trying to practice the words. Because I think sometimes just working on the right notes can totally divorce you from this idea of um, what the actual piece needs to sound like. And that little reminder once in a while, what I call sight reading, which at this point stops being sight reading because I've seen it a bunch of times, so it's not the first time I'm looking at it. That's the real definition of sight reading. You're seeing something for the first time and you just launch right into it. But borrowing that concept that you're just going to play, you're going to keep going forward no matter how many wrong notes you play, so as to teach your body to accept the tempo and the flow of the piece's character. All right, but let's let's kind of strike a ba balance, which is stop and go practice. Perhaps I'm going to take half measures at a time, right? And I'm going to stop, just like I'm stopping on those position jumps in the last measure. I'm doing that f starting at that first measure of the line, right? Me stopping and checking that. Yep, second finger is on D. All good. One, two, four, as shown, is on right here. Yeah, all good. And I make sure I'm not stressing out as I'm going. You know, and you're just panicking and it's lots of tension. It's no good for uh, mastering the piece. So, so these kinds of stop and goes are other ways you can try things. But honestly, what I showed at the beginning of... Uh, of this work and in, in the final measure where I was really going note by note, just making sure I'm not skipping over any potential difficulties gives me the best results I find. But all of all of those practice approaches are certainly possible. All right, now we go to the previous line. There it is. Right, same thing. I would say starting from, let's mark it with blue, from this point, most of that practice I, I went over is very, very similar. It's almost like a habanera, right? 
would I change to a three on that A, by the way? That's a good question. Maybe. But then maybe B and me, I would actually put a three here right away. It's a bit of an unpleasant stretch, but at least that way I don't have to think about it later. I think I, I like that more myself. Go for three right away. In the right hand, right, same thing, in and out, in and out. There's always that D here, C sharp there. Try out, go ahead and do this. You know, essentially change into your thumb being inside the keys all the time. See if it makes more sense. It might make more sense to you. I don't know. It's, it's sometimes very hard to decide whether doing this always, uh, where you have to go between the thumb on the black and thumb on the white, makes more sense or being a little bit uncomfortable, but the thumb being right there on the black key makes more sense. I, I don't really know. Sometimes it's something in between. Maybe you would put your thumb here, so you're not all the way inside the keys, but a little bit. something you know g g give those things enough of play time where you're just exploring and making sure you're you're choosing what fits your hand and technical abilities in the best way all right before the blue line yeah just expand it since uh, that's really the focus more of the same type of practice as i already showed on the penultimate line there but of course applied to a completely different type of chordal material so let's give it a good a careful examination yeah in the left hand if we are good with this idea of using three on a right away then we can apply it to here and that way my three is already on A, I don't need to move. I like one, four, five in the right hand, nothing to worry about there. But same thing, right? Make that move be as solid as possible. And by the way, in the right hand, I'm sorry, always mix those up for some reason. In the left hand, maybe even show that sort of position that you're not forgetting to keep three on A. Right? Now the thumb, I'm just letting it be where it is. However, maybe that's a good idea. Right, This habanero rhythm is getting me towards F sharp with the thumb in the left hand. So being inside actually makes a lot more sense. Uh, let me think. That would be a good fingering pattern. Yeah, I would say five, one, two, five, two, one. Um, in the on the third beat chord there just seems to make sense now if I pull out then spreading that third finger over to A like that makes it a little easier than if I'm deep inside already because the black fingers are in the way black fingers black keys are in the way of my fingers right so maybe playing it on the edge here makes sense but then as you go here start to maybe as you play slide in something like that right so i, I would encourage that kind of move because it seems to work So this diagonal arrow basically says slide and slide. Okay. Now that we've figured out the acrobatics or slides or whatever you want to call it, uh, gymnastics of some sort, you know exactly what to practice, right? These are the motions. That's what you have to master. Or maybe you came up with your own alternative fingers and different ways to slide, but whatever you come up with practice. That's hard. I mean, that's a big jump. Uh, let me 
think about the right hand fingering real careful. On the one hand, I like the consistency of one, four, five, one, four, five all the time. On the other hand, I think you can probably combine a couple of those things into groups. So for instance, let's say one, two, four is too much of a stretch for your hand, but I think one, three, five is probably universally possible for most hands. And so if that's the case, that grouping of three, five, four, five, three, five, on the first two chords of this measure, I think works nicely. Now, with black keys, I often prefer to use the four. So that one, two, four seems to be pretty nice. That goes right to one, three, five. So if I were to finger it, that's what I would do. Three here, and of course, three here as well. Three here as well. Yeah, and then there, I'm trying to do two and a four. That's just, to me, seems like an easier to navigate fingering pattern. And you could see how my thumb had to slide in and out, yeah? So that'll be a practice moment. That. You can even stop right here. You don't always have to go to the end of the measure because Sometimes there are too many jumps and it gets a little too much. So break it down. Uh, that's a jump. You can use the pedal here. I'm not using it right now, but there's nothing wrong with doing. Right, something like this. But then if you use the pedal, even more reason to jump right away. There. It's a move, it's a big jump, both hands. So taking time to master it is a really good idea. And then there's probably going to be some pedaling on that uh, first half note chord. That's kind of nice. Yeah. So, um, my real bigger point here is this, that yeah, you don't have to practice everything down to the final detail unless i guess you're getting ready for some high stakes recording session where you want to be absolutely in control but um you need to isolate the most difficult feature of every measure or two and put in all your effort to make that difficulty a little less difficult by laser focusing on that and most important is stopping there. So oftentimes, you know, and I remember myself doing it, uh, something is difficult, you just hope it works out, you you make, make your way through it, and it was probably even okay. You get to the other side and you, you think to yourself, oh, thank God it was okay, you know, but in the, in, inside yourself, you're, you're really nervous and you don't want to be practicing that approach into your technique because then of course what happens when things don't go according to plan and you screw up and you get tense and everything else starts to unravel so if something is difficult like for instance uh, this jump right going from here to here that's a bit of a move let's admit that right you have to replace three with four here you have to jump diagonally the thumb just do that you will find certain muscles engage in a very specific way right and then you're good and then of course with the right the left hand want to teach yourself to park it where it needs to be parked so maybe here right so if i'm using the pedal i'm going to move right away some people find it very hard to see the half note and not uh, let go of it because if half note means I have to hold it with a finger even though the pedal can be used so I often suggest do this just uh, color that in whenever it wakes up no okay sometimes it takes a while there well okay that was a mess so the idea is that you rewrite the music to uh, reflect how you're playing it not how the composer wants it to sound right 
And some, some pianist composers, they often do uh, put in the pedal markings, they uh, do write just like that, you know, something like Debussy maybe, but others don't. And that's when I think rewriting this way actually helps a lot if you're maybe more of a visual person and you really follow the musical extract uh, instructions to the T. All right, I'm stuck again, but hopefully it wakes up soon. No. Oh, it did wake up. Okay, I'm gonna zoom back out and go to the previous line. Let's see, hold on. I'm gonna wrap it up pretty soon because that's a long enough video already. Yes, now it jumps. Okay, so this uh, line, starting with measure 71, very similar to everything else. The, the left hand really does this habanera pattern throughout most of the piece. Yes, there are exceptions, of course, but there is that's the consistent feature. Right, we talked about maybe doing that here, down, down below. So if you're preferring to use finger three to solve some problems in the left hand, I would recommend doing the same here. Yeah, so that three just makes sure. And then I have two ready to go. That jump of one, one there at the end of the line, I think that's just fine. So that's the left hand. In the right hand, again, one, four, five, one, four, five, sure. But maybe here I would myself do a three, five, just to combine chords into units, right? Instantly you have to be here. Same thing, I would just say one, three, five it because it's, three is already there, right? So you can just slide in. Here is a little hard. That's the final measure. You're literally playing as you change position. Very, very uncomfortable. And I, I don't think there are alternatives to this problem. So, so I'm kind of going for this motion, right? My second finger is here. The whole uh, forearm, right? It's a little bit, what do they call it? Pronated. I think the, the term is pronated, but anyway, you're, you're doing that kind of rotation. So that as you play the second finger at this weird 45 degree angle, you can already stretch out the fifth and do that. If you play everything not pronated or sort of rotated in the regular way where the top of your hand is parallel to the key surfaces, then you can't really reach far. There's only so far you can stretch out this way. But if you rotate, you can cheat a little bit like this. Yeah. And then you have to jump. So put in those markings, put in those position markings as much as possible because they remind you to practice very specific things that are not written in the score because the composers only care about what notes to play. They don't care about the poor pianist's uh, problems of technical challenges and so on. And I think fingers are just sometimes not enough to communicate what you have to teach your hands and arms and the rest of the body to be able to do. Okay. Yeah, so that, that I would really stick on and, and practice until you can do it, at least in one hand with that jump, then let's add the left hand. Um, what, what am I doing? I would make sure that the left hand jumps as, as soon as possible, right? I'm just going to remind of what's down below. It's five, two. Again, I'm just slightly pronating or whatever this uh, physiological term is called, making sure I can stretch five and maybe two towards the note. And so I'm just, I'm just waiting 
in the uh, right hand, that second finger, boom, you know, I'm doing that move to kind of prepare for. Seems straightforward, seems like I'm only practicing one little note, but there is so much hanging on that move being perfectly executed that I would really spend time to make sure that's happening while this is happening as well. Okay, then you back up and probably four there. It's not written, but it's implied. One, of course, in the in the left hand. Already try to put second finger on G just to have that habit built in. Yeah, so you're holding that F sharp and A. I'm about to hit the second finger on D and then I'm going to do and all I'm doing is releasing the A. I'm not even bothering with reposition in my left hand. It's already in position. Maybe what I could do, that, that might be helpful. In the left hand, let's remind ourselves, we need to slide in because thumb has to play the C sharp. So what I would actually remind myself to do is, what is this? That. So in fact, as I come out, let's label it as, I don't know, orange. All right, I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready. And now, ah, now it gets a little more complicated. Now I have this very uncomfortable move in both hands. I'm letting my second finger escape out of D as well in the right hand. Okay, so you do this, you do this, you do this. Um, what else do you have to do? Maybe one thing you could do is that. Let me put it in and then we'll discuss it. That. So that little square on C sharp in the right hand says, just put your thumb right there at that point. In fact, let's do this. We've just played A. I'm gonna back up to a green colored moment. We've just played A and we already put, yeah, we already put the thumb down on C sharp. Holding A, about to strike the, th the fourth beat. Ah, that was tough. I had to play this legato and this staccato, and this is not hard, not, this is not easy. So in fact, maybe what I'm going to do is put a little stop right here. In fact, maybe even right there, if I can do it, there. And all I'm going to worry about is making the move in the left hand until it's easy. Not quite, but get in there. This eliminates multiple problems, having to keep track of multiple problems at the same time and allow, allows me to convincingly master both the staccato articulation in the left hand and that slide inside move in the left hand while the right hand just plays F sharp and that's it. Right. So I think, again, if I were to analyze this measure, I would say the, the very end of it is much more difficult than the beginning where you're just doing pedal is probably down, right? Because we're holding that right hand chord while playing the inner voice. I mean, yeah, there is a little bit of the traveling motion in the left hand. You're in a stretch out position, but technically speaking, it, it's much more straightforward than what you have to do in all those <laughs> multicolored lines. So again, apply the same logic to all the other measures in this section. Uh, and then we make it all the way to the top, which it luckily repeats a lot, right? I would love it to suggest group in one, four, fives with one, three, fives, maybe occasional one, two, four, but I will leave it to each individual person. And I just want to say, if you do that, let's say this, kind of 
feeling the hand more as a block shape where you're just moving the same finger pattern th through the uh, melody chords as you are pedaling of course then your 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 job is different you need to really master those little micro jumps i would still favor 135 on that final chord even though right if you use this logic where everything is 145 then everything has to be 145 not natural you really want to put two here naturally but if you use three it helps with some further uh, shapes that are coming up and you know maybe you can even slightly r rise up on that pedal notice I'm not even holding it down all the way it's already resonating Kind of in the middle there well enough for me to have still a little bit of crispness to my uh, maybe those staccatos and prevents it from being too heavy yeah if i went all the way just keep using that second finger right It's doable, but I find maybe if it's possible to teach yourself that half pedal moment. I don't think we really miss the fact that the top chord of the melody doesn't resonate fully. Yeah, I mean, it decays quicker, sure, but we can imagine it being there. And plus, I think the interest in that inner voice rhythm is enough to keep our attention and actually maybe even prefer the fact that it's a little more dry and has that rhythmic clarity but anyway it it's to each their own i'm not really trying to impose any interpretative uh concepts here but just saying that there a couple of options exist it sounds a little like gershwin okay different shape there in the left hand and that's a little reminder that when you play that a do that just let the thumb flick out you're still worrying about the five and the two but when the time comes all you have to do is a slight adjustment as opposed to oh I'm here oh, I need to be here you know too many things to worry about so again I wouldn't do it naturally you saw me being stuck there right but then suddenly that's a move in the meanwhile you're worried about what's going on in the right hand so yeah that's me uh, giving a little bit of the lowdown on the last page of this piece and of course if anybody has questions about any other uh, sections do please ask but I think this covers most of the technical bases that we need to cover in this particular piece so there it is <laughs>